This is Command Post, a series of discussions about military matters from Time and the Center for a New American Security. There's been a lot of focus on China's military buildup recently. How big of a threat does the Chinese buildup pose? Well, uh, great question. I, I've never been comfortable with posing the question uh, that broadly. What kind of a threat does it pose? I like to think in terms of threat to specific national interests. Uh, certainly, we're dealing with a Chinese military that is poised to present challenges that it's never been able to pose before. And as the recent DOD report points out, I think correctly, what we're seeing is the fruits of, of 17 years of focused and well-funded military modernization coming to fruition with new weapon systems, new platforms. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're looking at a Chinese military that has become more capable operationally and more professional institutionally, and it's a whole different beast than only 15, 20 years ago. So it raises a lot of uncertainties, and certainly there are some challenges implicit in that military modernization program. Okay, Dave, but let's talk about the denominator and not just the numerator. Mm -hmm. People keep talking about how fast the Chinese military is growing, how much money they're spending. Right. But what base are they starting from? Can you sort of put that in perspective vis-a-vis uh, -vis America or yeah. other? Yeah, well, let me just military? address this idea of how fast. I mean, how fast it's happening depends on where you came into this movie. Now, if, if you just came into the movie last week or last year, you may be taken aback by what the Chinese have been doing. But if you've been following this, if you came into the beginning of the movie, after the cartoons and after the trailer, and you started looking 20, 25, 30 years ago, as some of us have, is where the Chinese have come from, this has been slow, incremental, steady. Granted, tremendous progress and output these last few years. But they started from an extremely low base. And, and let me just say that even where they are today, as an exponentially more operationally capable force, they really aren't a match for the U.S. military. They're going to cause some problems if they chose to, God, God forbid. But still, we're talking about a military that, that has its own share of problems. So, but then, using the U.S. as, as the uh, lightning rod against which to measure it doesn't really uh, uh, cut it either because you have to do it in the context of the other regional militaries. So it's, it's a relative thing. What the Chinese military looks like, what kinds of challenges or threats it poses, depends upon who's doing the looking. Mm -hmm. Patrick, um, you're a China expert. Um, how much of a troublemaker is China likely to be in that part of the world? It, it seems that it's not just the United States that's concerned about what's going on in the Western Pacific, but everybody from Vietnam to Japan to South Korea. Is that right? Why are they so nervous about the Chinese? And all the way over to India as well. You have uh, a growing Chinese military capability. You've got a history of China willing to use force even when it's weak. Uh, remember, the Korean War was done during a weakness period for the Chinese. Um, its entry into uh, shelling the offshore islands in Taiwan in the 50s, it was done even though the, the, the People's Republic of China was new. So now that you're adding fifth generation aircraft, cyber and space capabilities, um, an aircraft carrier, yes, with a long way to go in terms of being ready and operational, but at the same time having sea trials. You've got a submarine fleet that's growing. This makes everybody in the East China Sea, South China Sea, and beyond very nervous about the Chinese growing capabilities. How assertive will China be when it really has power? In the latest Pentagon white paper on the People's Liberation Army, says that this decade, this decade is the decade where China is trying to finally bridge that technology gap. It's trying to link all of these uh, pieces of hardware together. I remember back in the first Gulf War in the early 1990s, briefing the People's Liberation Army about the U.S. operations in Iraq. And they took copious notes. They wanted to know, how could the United States produce this high technology force? Because that's what we Chinese want. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. this is the decade they're finally putting that together. Can, can I add just a, a couple of points to underscore what Patrick has just said, because he's touched on two very important things, if only implicitly. Number one, uh, uh, our understanding of the Chinese strategic calculus is still imperfect. So that's number one. He mentioned our historical examples where even during times of weakness, China is willing to absorb all sorts of losses and, and, and enter into conflict. So our understanding of their strategic calculus is still imperfect. But a uh, second point that I think Patrick's uh, remarks underscore is that for, for the first time in, in many, many decades, the Chinese now have the military element of power to be brought online, to be used as an option 
in all sorts of scenarios. And so these two things, uh, not understanding the strategic calculus and now having military options to put on the table is, are two factors that lead to this nervousness in the region that, that you asked about.